Well, we got no engine, but we got a topper. Hey everyone, and welcome back. On the last video, we determined that the oil leak from the double cab was probably most likely an oil cooler. So that engine has to come out. No way to fix that with it in the bus. So today I got to rearrange all of this, get the bus so that it's in this uh, blank carport bay here. I'm going to back it in and I got to clear all these bikes up here. So kind of got to be careful pulling in since I've got that stuff on the top of the double cab. It comes real close. So it's easier if I pull it in forward, but it's supposed to rain later and I would like to have room to work in here outside the rain. So with that being said, let me move all this stuff around. We'll bring the double cab in here and we'll pull the engine in that today. And sadly, it's just these little pieces that are causing our issue. But Davis Motorsport, uh, Davis Racing in Morristown, Indiana had them in stock. I went ahead and grabbed a set of the the other ones, some of them, uh, we'll see when we get this one open. The oil tower itself on the older engines, like the old engine out of pickle, the tower, the cooler itself is straight up and down and these have an offset. So there are two different types of little O-rings. But I went ahead and got some backups for the other engines. All right, I decided to put it in frontwards. It's a little easier to clear everything that's up above it. Got several bikes hanging up above it here. And it gives me enough room back here to work. Uh, once the rain kind of sets in, got a little bit of space here to get the engine out of this guy. So I've got uh, Mr. D up there working on the rooftop, cleaning it up for us. How's it going up there, mister? Good. Apparently it's going well. Can I get a thumbs up? Good deal. So we're for temporary going to put that, I think, uh, on the double cab here. Just pick this up. It's kind of got some mildew and mold on it, but pretty cool little piece. 1976. Kind of a special year, if I do say so myself. All right, let's get busy on pulling this guy. Well, it took me a lot longer to get those two pieces off probably than it is going to be to pull the whole thing out. And the single wheel uh, hitches here on the sides, I'm going to leave. Those I just used a piece of angle and replaced the original factory bumper bracket. Just mimicked the same thing. And over here I had to clear all this over here. So mine are a little bit different shape and I went up and over so that the single wheel clears the top part of the bumper but yet it's bolted back to the frame and not just to your bumper. Bumper's not strong enough. So it's leaking uh, much worse than it ever has been. And just in the other day of me running it here, you can see it's really puking it out. So it's not safe to run it anymore. And even though it's had a leak for a while, it's been checking full every time I drive it. I check the oil and check the belt tightness and just kind of give it a once over glance, make sure everything's hooked up every single time I drive it. It's getting to the point now where we can't drive it anymore. And that's no fun. So we'll get on that. I want to show you real quick though, we're working on this, kind of cleaning the mildew off of this. And the boys have got it looking pretty incredible. It goes from that to this. So they've done a bang up jog on it so far. That's exciting. All right. Let me get a few things disconnected, get a jack under that, and let's get this thing out of here get it fixed and back in. So I'm gonna unhook sending unit, the coil, the alternator up here. And then I think our electricals, can't remember what into that. I've pulled them out of there. Ah, here we go. There's a couple tabs there on the tin. We'll have to unhook that. Throttle's gotta come off. Sounds like I need to intervene. The good thing about a bus is you can just pull this rear apron out and the engine will just pull straight out. I've got the battery unhooked. I just pulled the positive post off and everything here unhooked. So I think, let's see, throttle's unhooked. Let me pull this rear apron out 
And we'll see if, about getting a jack under that and getting those four bolts loose and getting this sucker out of here. Hopefully you can kind of see there. I uh, can't believe how much worse this has gotten. Just in the last drive. Good deal here. She needs a good bath. That's pretty bad. All right, it is still checking full. That's what's amazing to me. There's that much oil just everywhere and it still checks full. It doesn't take very much to make a mess, that's for sure. This engine is full flow, dual port full flow, so don't. I had to remember to unhook the uh, oil filter that's off to the side. Uh, I have three bolts out the one on top behind here and the two bottoms are out this one i'm getting ready to head under and get it out from it's right above the the clutch lever so i'm going to go pull that one out and then i think we are ready uh, so far it's not been that bad it's gone from uh, last time i was working on that bus it was about 45 it is 90 today and it's less than a week later like four days later so let me get that other one out of there and i'll go get the jack we'll slide the the jack under and then we should be able just to kind of jiggle it and wheel it out i hope the thing is about this one it doesn't have any kind of manual choke or anything like that so i'm not hopefully i'm not forgetting and the heater boxes aren't hooked up so hopefully i'm not forgetting to unhook something we'll find out won't we okay all four bolts are out See if we can get this booger out of here. I may have to go up or down. I don't know which way I'll need to go. Everything's so greasy, it's hard to hold on to. <laughs> and I've mentioned this before, but we use a motorcycle jack to pull these out. So much easier than using a regular jack. It's much easier to get it by yourself. The idea is to not put, you don't want to put too much pressure on it because then it changes the angle of how that bolt is through there. And then that causes you fits there. Here we got that side to move a little bit. There we go. Got to rustle looking a little bit sometimes. Come up just a hair. Okay. It would have to be a eighty five or ninety degrees today much warmer than it has been. You can see what we're hanging up on back there. Heater boxes were hooked up. I didn't hook those the last time. It's always a good thing to check if it doesn't want to just come right out, so that's why I stopped. We'll come up just a little. Sometimes you try to outthink yourself on things like that, you know? I think we are free. Mostly. I thought I'd unhooked those already, but nope. A pair of vice grips back on the gas line that I'd taken off on the back side. <laughs> All of a sudden I start seeing gas. I'm like, what is going on? When I pulled them out, I bumped the, the uh, 
wires loose on the line. That's going to be kind of stinky for a little while. may have to uh, drop to clear this single wheel hitch here. back there? I don't think so. can't believe I put those in a spot that got caught. I thought I had them out of the way. Guess not, huh? Hitting over here. Sorry, I got interrupted there. Should be all the way good now. gas line comes off and that's why I had preemptively clamped that and then <laughs> when you know it those fall and knock it off. Well that one's out. Let's see if we can fix it. I think it had a little bit of an oil leak. <laughs> yeah I'm not having that. So our problem is right under this thing right here. It's pretty much just straight down right there. So we gotta get the back tin off of there, or shroud, this piece here, get to it and fix it. And then I am gonna spend some serious time cleaning it up because I am definitely not putting that, I mean, putting all this back in here like that, no way, not happening. And I'll clean up the cabin as well. What was happening is making it so nasty too is it would come down into this lower tin and the pulley and belt would hit it and sling it and it just sling it everywhere i mean it's just i cannot stand that <laughs> there i have my limits and that has reached it so we'll come in here and we'll clean this out real well and get that all good and cleaned up i did find i threw a belt on this once and that belt probably be long before it busted was slipping and that is probably what caused our oil cooler issue is the engine just was getting too hot and that is pieces of that original shredded belt do not buy if I can give you any advice the continental version that has Kevlar in it I also am a cyclist I have used the Kevlar continental tires and they're terrible they have blowouts. I've been on many, many rides and had a blowout using a Continental Kevlar tire. And I had a Continental Kevlar belt on this, and it was not good. So I am going to replace. The, go ahead and replace this belt. There's no doubt in my mind that it has had some exposure because you can see it kind of has a sheen to it. And it's just kind of sticky. So I'm going to get rid of this belt. I have another one. I have a backup. And we'll go ahead and order another backup, but we're going to put replace that while we're in here. That's a Napa, but the Continental belts, and this is exactly what they did on my bicycle tires. The pieces, get it to focus, see the linear striations there? It separates from like the backing plate or the backing portion of the belt, and it just shreds. It did the same exact thing with the bicycle tires, so I am not a fan of those type of belts but I did find those three pieces laying right back in here they were just laying right back in there on that side and there was one sitting right here so it's a good thing we're getting it out and getting it clean and I'm sorry for the gas smell it's about to gas me out I tried to prevent that but sorry for y'all good thing we don't have smell of vision huh so we'll clean it up I'll fix the fix the problem. We'll clean it up. We'll put it back in. It'll take me a couple days with my with my lifestyle, <laughs> but it's out. It's in the process, and I'm really quite glad that it got bad enough where we could figure out where it was. Taking an engine out of a bus. Don't forget to put your uh, anti knock in the head safety mechanism up. I think while I've got this out, I'm gonna pull all the tins off, clean them 
and repaint everything. Now's the time to do it while I've got it out. So it's going to be kind of a pain to take those all off, but I think, I think I'm going to because the paint's starting to come off on this one down here and I want to keep it looking nice if I can. So I'm going to go ahead and pull all the tins off, clean them, paint them, and we'll fix the problem. This one's not too bad, but I'll probably just go ahead and repaint everything. That with that oil on there, that paint's never gonna stay. Get that all cleaned off of there. Yeah, let's take all the tins off. You know, sometimes in the garage sale pile, there's a tool that you didn't have. And you don't realize how handy it is until the perfect job presents itself. Yeah. Those are all over the place getting in those tight little spots. Like for example, right back in there. And I have the perfect tool. It pays to buy little boxes of tools at garage sales for a couple bucks. Paid off in spades. Thank you, Yankee. Well, the good news is it's not the oil cooler. So that appears to be totally fine. Uh, what I think it might be is a pushrod tube or a head bolt. I don't think it's here at the fuel pump because I sat here and watched that and I didn't see anything uh, leaking down up there. And where I'm seeing the oil pool is right here. Unfortunately, I have the, one of those tins down on the bottom. Let's see if I can point to it here this tin right here so looking up from the bottom you can't see the push rods or sorry the push rod tubes can't see the push rods anyway uh and so just looking up and watching it run you can't actually see down in there and regardless of if it is that or isn't that if it is it had to be pulled anyway so we can find it on this engine the uh the carburetor i'm running is like off of a pinto or something i don't know and it's so tight that i actually had to get the uh, alternator it's not focusing there kind of uh, a notch out the alternator and this is actually just like a putty that's in there so in order to pull that back tin off the carburetor has to come off so that you can because it won't clear the alternator won't clear it because the carb sits here against it on top of it so you basically have to tear the whole thing down anyway so what I'm gonna do is just push it back in under the bus and I have pickles engine currently on the engine stand right here so I'll either bomb an engine stand off of Dad, or we'll move Pickle to a different location. And we'll throw this up on the stand once we kind of think we've got it fixed and run it, just to make sure before I throw it back in the bus. Uh, I'm not seeing any leaking up on the seam of the case, so I don't think it's there. Uh, it all looks good and dry. So I think it's probably, probably down here. So we'll pull that. There's a bottom tin on there. We'll pull that off, pull this top one off, and I think we'll be able to see... It's definitely happening on the number three, four side, for sure. Uh, that's where most of everything's kind of pooling. We have some over here, but nothing like we're seeing it on this side. So, got to find it though. It can't, it can't be run like this. But we're gonna quit on it for today, and we're gonna try and put the rooftop tent top on top and just kind of see what it looks like. It may not even work on this bus. I bought it with the intent. Of putting it on pickle eventually so but we're gonna leave the pieces and parts up here and I'll bring you back when we uh, when we fix it well we got no engine but we got a topper what do you think I like it we got to build some kind of a brace up front that'll push up on that and it's kind of hard to open that way and put the pole stabilizer in the back, but I um, I don't think I want to run down the highway with the part that opens exposed to the wind. And I like the fact that it loads so you get into it on this side and there's no door here. So let me see if the ladder, I have a ladder for it. Let me see if that even is remotely gonna work. But I like it. I love the color. 
Can't believe how nice it cleaned up too. Just barely clearing that bike up there. It's called a penthouse sleeper. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. This is number 315 of I don't know how many they made. I found a couple of articles about it in Popular Mechanics, but other than that, I haven't found much information about it, but I can't wait to camp in that. That's gonna be awesome. Well, I've had a couple hours to think about it and I've slept on it and I've come to the conclusion that it has to be something up on top. I don't think it's anything down below. So, we've eliminated the uh, oil sending unit. I've eliminated the oil cooler. We're down to these two guys, or a crack block, where it is actually so good on oil pressure. Uh, I got a push rod tube that's leaking down here and shooting it up between the 10, right about there, and pushing it in here. But it is pooling an awful lot up on top here. So that would lead me to believe the leak is somewhere up here going down to the tins. Uh, everything's going to get taken off and cleaned. I'm going to go ahead and take these off and see if... I don't. I know the leak's probably not over there. I'm, I'm saying I know probably not because I was convinced it was the oil cooler and I'm clearly wrong. Uh, sometimes they fool you. But I'm going to take this one off. We're going to take a look under there because that's where I'm seeing all the wetness. But the... And you can't really see it. Under the push rod tubes there, this tin that's down here next to the heater box, it's not wet at all. So that would make me think that maybe that's not leaking. But we're going to check it out anyway. We'll check it out. If we don't see anything, we'll put everything back together. We'll get it where it'll run. And we'll sit here and we will watch it till we find it. Uh, so get ready for, for that. Uh, I'm anxious to get this thing fixed, get it back on the road. I've been chasing this leak for a while. Uh, it's finally gotten warm enough and the leak has gotten bad enough. We should be able to see it with it out here running. So I'll put it on engine sand. We'll run it. We'll see if we can find it. Uh, we will find it. And we'll fix it if we can. Hopefully it's not a crack block, because that'd be really a big time bummer. I don't think it is. It's been leaking for a while. And just now, like I said, getting bad enough where can't drive it. Uh, probably replace the plug wires too, since they're all kind of sticky and funky from getting oil slung all over them. Definitely replace the belt. Uh, but hopefully by the next time you see a video from me, this will be on its way to repaired, if not repaired, and back in the bus. I mean, it's not rocket science. It's four bolts, a gas line, a throttle, and some electrical, and it's back in. Thanks for being here, everybody, and I'll catch you on the next one. Hopefully we're going for a drive. See you next time.